Today's video, I'm going to explain different features for your telemetry readouts on your Spectrum NX transmitter with a compatible telemetry spectrum receiver. So let's get started. First thing we need to understand which receivers will allow telemetry callouts. When you have a spectrum receiver and the model number has the letter T, that means it's a telemetry receiver. You do have some receivers like the AR620s that don't have telemetry readouts, but they do have telemetry for flight logs. So let's go in the monitor, we'll look at a few things. First is our flight log, which has our fades, frame loss, and holds. Also has our receiver voltage. Our min max, there it shows RPM altitude and receiver. This lets you know your minimum and maximum from the variables on the screen. Telemetry, you have RPMs. And I want to mention something about the telemetry of RPMs. If you have a smart ESC, like a Spectrum Avian, smart battery, and a smart telemetry receiver, you can get some other callouts that won't be available when you're just using the Spectrum telemetry receiver. You'll get things like RPMs, amp draw, and individual cell voltage, just to name a few. Here we have altitude. You put your airplane on the runway, push the clear button, it'll zero it out, and then you have a little bit of fluctuation because it's just a built-in barometer. Then we have our ASRX. Now we have the gyroscope that lets you know how much the gyro is moving. You also have your max values on the right. Your G-force, so that's going to be the G's of planes have maneuvered. And then the variometer, that's going to be up to 15 seconds, shows you your altitude. So now let's go back in to our telemetry features and our function list. Here we have the options that are set up currently. You see we've got four empty spaces. We can use those to add something or we can go and take something out like RPMs that's not set up in this configuration. First one's variometer. If you want to adjust something, you just go in and push it twice. Now here it's active. You can put it on a switch if you choose to have it to be able to turn on and off. So you see your different features there. You have your altitude. So that's going to show you your minimum and maximum. Come standard set is 400 feet because with airplanes you're supposed to be under a 400 feet ceiling. You can go over and put this on an alarm. So if you do go above 400 feet, it will notify you. You have status reports and warning reports. Now as we go through these telemetry receivers, Status reports and warning reports is the same thing. Status report, you can put it on a timer and it will call out the status however many seconds that you have set up. In warning reports, it will call it out when you have a warning. So you can choose to use both of those or you can just use one of them. Now we'll go back. RPMs, we don't have that for this setup. G-Force. So you can set your minimum maximum. And on every one of these, you can do an alarm. Just want to show you all a couple of screens. So you can do a minimum maximum alarm for each telemetry that you have on here. It's just what you want to call out. So you even have flight log where if you have a certain amount of frames, hold, or signal loss, the alarm will go off. So many different features you can set up. Now something else you can do, if you look back, in one of my previous videos, you'll see I talked about setting up the ticker tape. Is you can set up these telemetry options through there. So that it scrolls at the bottom of the main screen. You notice you don't see anything at the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll push enter. We'll go down to function bar. Ticker tape setup. I'm going to add a sensor. We'll go to volts, go back, let's go to another sensor, let's add altitude, add g-force,
and we'll add gyroscope. If you add something that's not equipped on your sensors with your receiver, it will say no report. So I just did that so you guys could see what would happen if you pick something that's not available. Now we'll go back. And once you put everything in there, you can see it's actually cycling through the values fairly quickly. You can put the duration at a higher amount, and that's going to be how long that feature stays on the screen. So you can do it individually. I'm going to go in and put all these on five seconds. Now let's go back out to the main menu. And you'll see at the bottom... It will actually take five seconds each time and it's going to cycle through our different reports. If you learned something new today or liked the video, go ahead and push the like button. If you want to see future videos, subscribe to the channel while you're here. I appreciate you all watching and I'll see you on the next one.